Sophia Ramos says, we don't, we don't mess around, Tony. We get the reigning Mountain West Conference Player of the Week uh, in studio. And uh, Sophia, congratulations on that honor, and thanks for coming by today. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for having me. It's good to have you, and it's fun to watch you play. And, uh, you know, I just think before we get into the Aztecs and some of your stuff, I mean, just talk a little bit about National Girls and Women in Sports Day. I mean, the opportunities for young ladies such as yourself have grown exponentially over the last two decades, and you're during your lifetime, basically. Uh, and I'm sure that, uh, you know, you're very proud of what you've been able to accomplish and been, a, you know, been allowed to accomplish, I think, and uh, want to keep the, keep the ball rolling. Yeah, so I just love that kids are able to come out and come use us as role models because at one point we were in their shoes, um, looking up to those that are in the pros now, looking up to those that are even uh, collegiate players now. Um, so it's just really cool that we get to have a day dedicated to that and have a bunch of kids come out and watch us play and hopefully have us inspire them. Now, the game the other day uh, against New Mexico, you guys set a, an attendance record for, for women's basketball. Talk a little bit about that because clearly um, it seems like there's starting to be some noise made, obviously, about women's sports, but particularly about how you guys have played as of late. Was that pretty cool to see to see the arena filled up like that? Yeah, it's super cool. Um, you know, we don't get as many fans as the guys, but seeing it where it's a bunch of kids who love the game of basketball, love getting to watch whether um, they get to play, get to they even know us. It's super cool, um, mm -hmm. especially seeing it be a record for us right yeah. now. It's pretty cool. Sophia Ramos is with us. Uh, Taylor Kelmer, also from the Aztec women's basketball team, is going to be uh, jumping in here in a few minutes. Uh, practice ran late today, I understand. Yeah, Coach uh, Terry Hudson <laughs> is keeping you guys uh, hustling. Uh, uh, Sophia, who did you look up to as, as a young lady? You grew up in San Antonio, Texas, uh, and you told us you were a Spurs fan, so... You're a front runner. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> but uh, who do who? What kind of? I mean, athletes did you look up to? Was it women athletes, or did you look up to men athletes? Both? What? Um. So I grew up loving UConn because uh, they were a powerhouse mm -hmm. in college basketball. Um, I loved watching like Maya Moore play. I loved watching like Candace Parker, Diana Taurasi, and the pro Sue Bird. Um, but growing up for me, um, Leslie Vorpal, who played at Tulane, who's now playing overseas, she was a big person I looked up to. Um, she didn't really care how old I was. I was a manager when I was in fifth grade or fourth grade, and she was in middle school. So she would always push me and just have fun with it, knowing I was nowhere near as good as she was. But she was always a big encourager um, as I was growing up. That's awesome. Yeah, see, I don't think we realize the kind of impact that these young ladies have on, yeah. on other young ladies. You know, we... We don't pay enough attention to women's sports in general in this country, and uh, we got to remember that more than 50% of the people are women out there, and a lot of them like to play sports. And I'll tell you one, if you've ever seen Sophia Ramos play, they can play it well. Now, they Sophia, can definitely play it well. You, you, you're in your second year here at San Diego State. You mentioned you come from San Antonio. How, how does a, a, a young lady from San Antonio find herself over here in San Diego playing for the Aztecs? Um, you know, I got lucky finding a good club organization. Um, I started with the South Texas Hoyas with um, Coach Teresa Nunn, and she played had me playing up all the time growing up. Um, she took me actually to the Texas A&M camp. She figured a group of us should go to that, and I actually met uh, Coach Nick Grant out there um, and then just kind of stayed in touch with him. And then once I made the transition from the Hoyas to San Antonio's Finest with Coach Ray Caldwell. These are AAU teams, Yeah, right? okay. Yeah, so I uh, – um, I got to play for a couple of great organizations in San Antonio. Coach uh, Ray and the finest being my the one I finished with, you know, they had good connections and helped make sure I kept the relationships with them. And knowing Coach Grant since I was in fifth, sixth grade um, kind of helped land me out here. She's talking about Nick Grant, who's one of the assistant coaches right. who went to Baylor, right? Yeah, so yes. that's where the Texas connection comes in. And uh, so... Nick was able to, and, and and there was another young lady, Mallory Adams, who came from around your area, not that close. I guess Frisco, Texas, is closer to Dallas than San yeah. Antonio, but uh, the Essex were lucky to get both of them at the same time yeah. last year. Unfortunately, Mallory got injured this year, and you guys are still having a very nice season, back to uh, five hundred six and six in the conference. You've won three in a row without Mallory, and I know that's probably been a little tougher on you guys because if you had her, you guys would be even more dangerous. Yeah, Mallory, though, has been taking on a, a different kind of role, but she's still a huge part of our team. Um, she, we're so happy to have her back with us all the time. I'm ecstatic to have her back. Uh, 
just being a best friend and everything. Um, but she, uh, you know, she's taking on a new role and we're having challenges with it, but she's definitely the person for the job. Um, and I can't wait to have her back next to me on the court and I can't wait to see what we get to do with her again. Absolutely. Now, uh, Taylor Kelmore has just walked into the building. Hello. Practice ran a little long. Taylor, thanks for yes. joining us today. I bet you practice didn't me. run long. I bet you just Taylor stuck around to shoot more. No, if it, I ran, know her. it ran long. <laughs> oh, it ran long? Yeah, okay. we had to watch some film after. I've seen you out early Otherwise shooting before. <laughs> so. so we're ta- talking about National Girls and Women's in Sports Day. Uh, we're talking about some of the role models that, that you guys have looked up to, whether they be male or female. Who are some of the... Uh, athletes, role models you looked up to as a young lady growing up? Um, I think from the girls' side, I really liked Skylar Diggins. I think she brought just like a spark to her when she played, and I just think that she did a lot off the court as well to influence young girls. And um, she kind of played that role of being a beast on the court but being girly at the same time, and I loved that about her. (laughs) You know, the Aztecs played against her in a tournament, yes, way back when – I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, something okay. like that. It was in, um, I think it was in Hawaii or the Virgin Islands, one of the two. She it was one play. of those Thanksgiving tournaments, and we ran up against Notre Dame and Skylar Diggins in the in one of those games. Okay. I remember her very well. Uh, Taylor Kelmer, we're lucky to have her in San Diego. She start, grew up in uh, the Phoenix area, but uh, went to Oregon State. And this is a kid who got to play in the Final Four as a freshman at Oregon State with that team. Uh, tell us what that experience was like, Man. even at the women's level, because we're all dreaming about it maybe for the men this year, you know, <laughs> yeah. our, our men. But you got you've actually got to live that dream. Yeah, it was just awesome. I mean, we were able to travel to different places and um, meet people, and they hooked us up with some Nike gear, so that wasn't too bad of a deal. <laughs> I loved that always gear. always good. I loved that. That was just awesome. I mean, it was a great experience, and to be at, you know, a freshman, you know, looking up to all those seniors who – um, gave me an example of what it takes to get there, which is something that I'll, you know, I'll take with me wherever I go. Now, you, you end up transferring from Oregon State. Mm-hmm. You end up here at San Diego State. Mm-hmm. Two questions. Okay. What about San Diego State brought you here? Mm-hmm. And what kind of wisdom, being that you've been able to get to mm-hmm. a Final Four as a freshman, what kind of wisdom have you tried to impart on, on this young group here at San Diego State? Yeah. Um, well, for your first question, I – being from Arizona, I definitely knew that, you know, I, I missed my family a little bit. I needed the sunshine yeah, and um, yeah. just a change in the the system. And um, I'm very thankful for everything that uh, OSU taught me and just being there. But, um, you know, I'm so happy to be here at SDSU. And um, the wisdom I think I can bring, I just, like, I know what it takes. Like, I know the work you got to put in day in and day out on and off the court. I know the mental toughness you have to have, you know, those girls were all Americans my freshman year. And like, just to see that, I know like what a practice needs to look like. I know what a weight room needs to look like to be disciplined, to overcome adversity and all that stuff. So I just hope that I could bring a little bit of that, you know, while I'm here. She nice about it, Sophia, or does she kind of yell at you guys sometimes? Hey, I'll admit, I yell sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> they know it's. I'm serious. Well, but. that's that's it. Hey, you got to be serious from time yeah. to time. You know, uh, we're talking a little bit about your game on Saturday. You're playing Air Force at one o'clock. Mm-hmm. Uh, but before we get to that, I wanted to just both of you, if you realize, because you 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 touched on it, Sophia, a little bit before Taylor got in here. But uh, just if you realize the impact you're having, I mean, there's a bunch of parents listening right now, young ladies listening right now, that maybe one day dream of being a Division One athlete. Mm-hmm. Um, what would you say to their parents? What would you say to them, having gone through the experience yourself? Sophia, you can go first. Um, I think for me it was just don't give up. Um, you know, coming from San Antonio, I had to uh, kind of use my connections to my advantage. Um, my club coaches both helped us, told us what to look for in an organization, kind of understand it's a bigger picture than just um, just basketball. Um, so if anything, just don't give up, keep working hard and build relationships and trust that because that's, what's going to ultimately help, help you have a great time. Taylor, what do you think? I would say for the parents, just for those that are listening, just thank you for, you know, everything that you do for your daughters that, um, just, they have an amazing ability to go to practice because of you guys and go to games. And, um, I'm so thankful for my parents for that. 
Um, your support is huge, and whatever age they might be, they might not see it quite yet, but they will someday. And um, you know, just know that you're going to be appreciated because of that. Um, for the girls, I would say don't be afraid to be different. Like, don't be afraid to miss out on certain things because you want to be working. You know, I think that um, sometimes in society and, you know, in school, we girls get sucked into certain groups and um, you got to make sacrifices and just know that if you keep putting in the work, those will pay off. Wise, wise words right there. Uh-huh. This mm-hmm. kid's all right. A lot of parents here. have a smile from ear to ear right oh, now. I hope because so. well, number one, number two, you got a parent right here who spends yeah. his Saturday afternoons going to soccer game after soccer game after yes. soccer game. Yes, so and he sometimes knows it feels like speak. we're just we're just uh, taxi <laughs> cab drivers after a while. But it's 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 nice to know that. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the season. You guys have uh, been on a nice little run here. Run last three straight, uh, six and six in the conference right now. Mm-hmm. How do you guys see this thing shaking out? Either one of you guys can take that one. I'm excited for us. I think we're in a great spot. I think, you know, to be able to compete against some of the tougher teams in this conference who are in the top and not only being able to compete but giving our shots at winning, I think we're super close. And I think we're in a great spot. I think we're hitting our peak at the right time. And, you know, we're going into this with momentum and we just got to finish out the rest of these games strong and then – take that momentum into the tournament, but I'm yeah. excited for us. Last year, Sophia was on the all-tournament team yep. and played really well, so uh, no pressure. You're going to just have to do that again <laughs> this year. A little bit better. You guys got to the semifinal last year, and I know it was a heartbreaking loss that they had there. But, uh, Sophia, what do you think about this year? I think, uh, you know, like Taylor said, we're hitting the peak at the right time. Um, we put in a lot of work throughout the week. Um, we're – we're going to be a little fresh coming off two buys then by the time it's time for the tournament. Um, but at that point, everyone knows everyone, and I think we have a really good shot at making some big things happen. Talk about the buildup, because you mentioned you're peaking at the right time. How do you keep the group together as you are going through these peaks and valleys throughout the course of the season up until this point? I mean, everyone knows kind of what the ultimate goal is, and everyone knows what it takes to get there. Um You know, some people were shocked at how we finished last year, Um, but a lot of us are bought in. We're all bought in. Um, We know it's, we keep saying it two feet, um, two feet in the boat, and Hmm. we know that's what's going to help take us to that next step in the tournament. So just having everyone invested. Taylor Kelmer also, she talked about, you know, working hard and knowing when to sacrifice. I, I must say that this is a kid that whenever I get to the game and I'm setting up my radio equipment, almost. I, without fail, is the first player out on the floor shooting. Sophia's right behind her. But it, this is why you get to be you know, great players, because great players work hard. It doesn't yeah. just come to you. I mean, yes, you have to have a certain amount of natural talent, but uh, I've watched these two kids, and I'm just so impressed with the jobs that they've done. How about the men's team? What do you, I mean, what are your thoughts watching what the men's guy, what the guys are doing at 23-0? and 0? And I, I'm sure somebody, some of the fans might be interested, listeners might be interested, what kind of connection do you guys have with the men's team? Because, I mean, I know you practice in the same gym, but mm-hmm. the travel's different. So yeah. do you get to see them much or what? Uh, we see them in and out. Um, you know, we're very friendly to each other and supporting each other. And, um, no, it's awesome. They're doing amazing. And um, it's just exciting to watch them. And they're, you can just tell they have great chemistry. And um, they all work super hard. They're all bought in. So it, it's cool to be able to see them and pick things apart from – what they have right now, too, to help us. Um, but it, we have a great relationship. You go to practice once in a while? Do you get there early to see them practice at all, Sophia, or just to, to get in the get in the arena and watch them dunk a few? I don't ever even know when they have practice in the <laughs> arena. <laughs> um, well, I mean, that's part of being a student athlete right there. you got a lot of stuff to take care of. Um, we actually did see them today, though. Um, they yeah. all look like they're having a lot of fun doing what they love. Um so, I mean, they have such high spirits. They're, like Taylor said, they're really friendly to us. So, you know, wishing them the best and supporting them just like they're supporting us. National Girls and Women in Sports Day is Saturday. The Aztecs, uh, we're lucky enough to have a couple of their players in here, Sophia Ramos and Taylor Kelmer. They play at 1 o'clock Saturday against Air Force. Uh, come on out because the men's game's not until 5 o'clock Saturday. So right. mm-hmm. uh, bring your young ladies out. I mean, I, I think you two guys are perfect examples of the kind of – impressions that you got 
watching other players play when you were younger, and now you probably get the same feeling after because I know after games they do a lot of autograph signing mm-hmm. sessions and things like that, and you must meet so many kids that you look at them and go, oh, "That was me yeah. ten years ago." Yeah. So. Uh, go on out and see them play this Saturday. Uh, it'll be a lot of fun, and uh, you can always come by and say hi to me. I'll be there if you want. <laughs> I, although I would, I don't think they're gonna come say hi. To you. Why not? Those... I'm a, I'm a big attraction at those. Hello, games. like you're a legend. See, that guy knows. <laughs> All right. Um, anything else, Mr. Gwynn? I hit all the the questions I had. You guys are hope sharp, they weren't man. too hard hitting for you guys. <laughs> How'd we do? How'd we do? That was fun. Yeah, yeah. Sure do you fun. like our studio? I do. It's, it's nice. Beautiful. It's not bad. Not a bad place to go to work. I don't know every if I've day. ever heard beautiful about well, it. Well, the complex is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> all the greenery outside is beautiful. That's I what to, I that's what I think of every day when I come in. <laughs> I tried to let them know about the history of the construction on the complex, but strangely they didn't really want to know. <laughs> they weren't so, interested. Yeah. I, I was giving them all the, the down low on it. Are you gonna offer them a tour of the building after sure, they're done? Sure, if they if they want a tour of this floor, maybe, because I can't get into the other ones. Yes. Well, I'm gonna <laughs> advise both of you ladies. Don't do it. Don't take it to him. <laughs> don't take it to him. Nah, Scraby, you don't want to. You don't want to get caught in that in that web. All right. Well, good luck to you guys uh, this weekend and the rest of the season. Of course, I get to see you all the time. But thanks for coming in. Thank I, you I so think much. you guys just set a tremendous example. And like Tony said, if you're a parent and you have a daughter and you just listen to this last twenty minutes, you're smiling. Yep. Ear to ear to mm-hmm. hear the things that you guys said. Tremendously well done. Thanks so much. Thank, Thank you, guys. You. Nice. Good luck the rest of the way, too. Appreciate Thank you. It. Yes, great job. Taylor Kelmer there and uh, Sophia Ramos from the San Diego State women's basketball team. All right, Tony Gwynn Jr., we're going to uh, – About two minutes, though. Got a couple of minutes here to go, wrap things up. Maybe Scraby can take that. I was just kidding about the tour. You should take a little tour of the building and check out the studios. It's kind of fun. Um, Lake show in action. Lake show tonight. Yes. Yes. San Antonio. Just beat no. the Spurs the other day, by it the way. Did, just beat did you the mention Spurs. that to Sophia? I, you know, I don't know Sophia like that. I don't want to be coming at her like <laughs> talking about the Spurs. Well, she's got a few championships on you since she's been alive anyway. Say, hey, Kobe right? did say before he passed that had it not been for the Spurs, they would have won 10 titles. But That's Spurs right. were always they had to in give the way. five to the Spurs and five to the Lakers. All right. Taylor, who'd you root for? Growing up in Phoenix and the Suns? Yeah, Charles back Bart- when they had Steve Nash. Steve Nash. Steve Nash, I loved watching him. Yeah. But I wouldn't say I have a specific team that I like. I just like certain people. You like the game. Yeah. Okay. Are you guys baseball fans at all? I am because my brother plays. So he's at ASC right now playing. But Oh, is he? Is he yeah. really? How about that? So I love watching what him What positions play. he play? Uh, third and first. Third and first. What year? Uh, freshman. Oh, man. Wow, just starting out. Yeah. And Sophia's brother is a... Top-notch high school player in San Antonio, right? Am I right about that? Yeah, he is. I get, uh, I get tweets from your mom and dad all the time. Or ba- uh, basketball or baseball? Basketball. Basketball. Okay. He's, he scored like 45 in a game earlier this year, something like that? Yeah, he uh, he finished with 47. 47. So trying to catch up I don't want to shortchange him. him. It's no, in the bloodlines. It's in the bloodlines. It's all right. Like. You got something to shoot for now, Sophia. Yep. I do. You'll make it. You'll <laughs> Thank make you. it. Thank you. All right. Well, thanks again to them for coming in. Uh, Lakers have the Rockets. Rockets tonight. Okay. We're coming back tomorrow, 3 o'clock. We'll get it all done, get you ready for the sports weekend. Uh, thanks for joining us, being part of a, uh, our little celebration of National Girls and Women in Sports Day. And thanks again to Sophia Ramos and Taylor Kelmer. You guys did a great job. Thank you. Much Thank you. better job in here than Tony and I would have done had we come out on a basketball (laughs) court with you guys. Touche. Touche. There you have it. All right. Thanks to Scraby. Thanks to Odd Thomas. Thanks to all of you for listening, participating. Gwen and Chris, as mentioned, tomorrow, 3 to 7, we'll uh, do it all again. Have a great rest of your Thursday night, everybody, from all of us here at San Diego's number one sports talk station, 97.3 The Fan. Good night.